My name is Matt Taylor. I'm the European Space Agency project scientist for the Rosetta mission. Well, the Rosetta mission has ended its operations, but the data that we have from Rosetta will last for decades. So this is the key thing. Although the mission in its operational phase has ended, now we have time to look through the data. And some of the results that we've had already are groundbreaking. And we've looked at only maybe 5% of this data. We've discovered things like molecular oxygen on the comet. Why is that important? It actually constrains how the comet was formed, where it was formed, and actually has an implication as to how and, and the conditions in which the solar system itself was formed, actually predating the formation of the sun. So that's just from this comet. That one molecule tells us all of that, and we have decades of this kind of results to, to come ahead of us. The Rosetta mission was audacious. We had the fillet landing in, in, in 2014, in, in November. So we deployed a lander to the surface, the first time this has ever been done. Actually, we rendezvoused with a comet. That had never been done before either. So we had these number of firsts that we were doing. We spent over two years escorting the comet as it went through its closest approach to the sun to find out how the comet worked. All of these were first, and all of this was a European mission with NASA inv involvement as well, but predominantly a European collaboration to study this solar system object. And it's been a, a, it's been a very hectic couple of years with many scientific breakthroughs. And then we, the, 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 the rock and roll finale has been putting the Rosetta orbiter on the surface as well. And that data we're starting to sift through as well. So there's, there's just too much to talk about. It was with mixed emotions that the, the end of the mission happened on the 30th of September. For colleagues in, uh, in, in Germany and in the mission control, they had spent their career, their job is to keep a spacecraft safe. So we turned them on their head and said, now crash the spacecraft. Scientifically, we had so many questions that we had, or we still have, and we're looking at that data. It was with mixed emotions. People had spent their entire careers on this mission, decades of their lives. They built an instrument that was like their baby and that was ending that day. So it was with, there was a lot of sadness, but also there was relief in some sense as well, because it's been a very, very hectic couple of years. The, the, the mission operations have been, and science operations, massively intense, massively complicated, but it was, uh, it was highs and lows. And, but ultimately I think we're all very happy about what's happened, that we, we've done something so great you know, I can say that. Uh, I think many people agree. Scientifically, there's been a massive breakthrough, but for many other things, the fact that we engage so many people, the fact that I'm here engaging with the public has been a major thing for Rosetta, that people know what Rosetta is, people know the importance of science, of engineering, but also more than that, of, of the endeavour, the human endeavour here, and that is something that people have cottoned on to. They may not be inspired to become a scientist, they may just be inspired to do something else, and that's not belittling anything other than science, but people have just been inspired by Rosetta musically artistically just to get up and do something and that for me is what Rosetta has been about yeah. within the time period of Rosetta ESA were trying different things trying and, and Rosetta was a fantastic vehicle it had all these aspects it was exploration it was going somewhere the unknown there was a science aspect that the challenge to engineering of, of flying around an object we didn't even know so we we're testing different things there was the cartoons that we have they originally were, there were only going to be one or two of them, but then it, it was shown to be a fantastic vehicle to demonstrate the science in a simple way. And I show them in my talks because they accurately depict what we actually did operationally and some of the science as well. And then the interaction on Twitter with the blogs as well, that we had a number of very active people online that would constantly be questioning us and, and picking up things and being generally interested. And that hit everyone you know that you can broadly you can hit a broad uh, cross-section of, of humanity with this kind of interaction and it's hopefully going to continue with our future missions I, I i very much like coming and giving public talks because you get a very positive feedback there's something about rosetta that engages people uh, coming here to glasgow has been a fantastic opportunity that i have a number of colleagues from glasgow um, and it's good to come back people I know in Strathclyde. There's a, there's, a, there's a buzz in this town already about space. There's a great involvement in space and understanding in space already. And so it's nice to come to a, how can I put it, a warm audience who, who are, are ready to learn more about the thing that they're interested in. And, and that was be, that's been great coming here to talk about the great space science that you can do with these, with these missions. And I hope that it continues in the Glasgow community because it's a strong science community and engineering community.